Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayers on Wednesday, August 11. Let's get started with our opening sentences. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. From Psalm 51. O depth of wealth, wisdom, and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are God's judgments, how untraceable are God's ways, the source, guide, and goal of all that is. To God be glory forever from Romans 11. Our morning psalm today is Psalm 1. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees, planted by streams of water which yield fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In all they do, they prosper. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. And our scripture reading today comes from John chapter 15, verses 1 through 5. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me, you can do nothing. This is the word of the Lord. What a lovely metaphor of growth that Jesus offers us in this passage. There's really a lot going on here. There's a message about connection, how we need to stay connected to Jesus, who is the true vine, or else we'll wither and fail to flourish. There's a warning about fruitless branches being removed. But what stands out to me today is the third message, that the Father prunes even the branches that do bear fruit so they can bear even more fruit. This tells me that our spiritual growth is not linear. Spiritual growth is not a straight and consistent process from infancy to maturity. The process of spiritual growth involves forward progress as well as regression, periods of standing still, times of pruning, and times of bearing lots of fruit. It ebbs and flows. It's anything but steady. And I think this is such a valuable reminder for us. We all go through quiet times. We all go through times of frustration when we're not seeing the results we hope for. We all experience disappointment with God and with ourselves in our spiritual lives. And it's easy to feel in those times like that means we're not growing. But it's actually the opposite. Times of cutting back or being cut back by God are a natural and healthy part of our spiritual growth cycle. Instead of being an indication that something has gone wrong or that we are in the wrong, it's actually affirmation that we're on the right track. God prunes us because we've been bearing fruit. God prunes us in order to prepare us to bear even more fruit. Sometimes walking with God can feel like two steps forward and 12 million steps back. And that's okay. It's uncomfortable for sure, but we have Jesus' assurance that it's natural. We should expect it. It's proof that we are continuing to abide in God and God is continuing to abide in us. And it's a sign of prosperous, flourishing times to come. 
That's the promise embedded in this passage. Pruning isn't punishment. It's preparation for what is to come. So we can claim this promise in the pruning times that better is coming and that when it arrives, we will have been made ready for it. Amen. Please join me now in a time of prayer and thanksgiving. Satisfy us with your love in the morning, and we will live this day in joy and praise. From Psalm 90. God of all mercies, we praise you that you have brought us to this new day. Brighten our lives at the dawn of promise and hope in Jesus Christ. Especially we thank you for the warmth of sunlight, the wetness of rain and snow, and all that nourishes the earth. For the presence and power of your spirit, for the support and encouragement we receive from others, for those who provide for public safety and well-being, for the mission of your church around the world. Merciful God, strengthen us in prayer that we may lift up the brokenness of this world for your healing and share in the saving love of Jesus Christ. Especially we pray for those in positions of authority over others, for the lonely and forgotten, for children without families or homes, for agents of caring and relief, for the church in Asia and the Middle East, and for those you have given us to pray for in particular, Lord, we pray for healing for George Del Fabro, for Judy Nelson, for Keith Geckler, for Marin Stanzik, for Diana Stearns, and for Carol Barlow. We pray for strength for Toby Nelson, and we pray for comfort for Lisa and Aaliyah. Eternal God, you never fail to give us each day all that we ever need, and even more. Give us such joy in living and such peace in serving Christ that we may gratefully make use of all your blessings and joyfully seek our risen Lord in everyone we meet. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Please join me now in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Go this day with this blessing from the book of Romans, chapter 12. So far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised.